Hey y'all. So today we sit with Flicka Ron. I tagged Flicka for our topics today, which will include sound, vibration, music, tuning, chakras, and how we could incorporate these possible benefits into our daily practices. So why Flicka? Well, she's an internationally known vocalist, composer, and sound healer with a distinguished career in academia teaching at a number of universities. A former associate professor of music at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, where she taught for 22 years. She has also served on multiple faculties, including Boston Conservatory of Music and the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio, Texas. She earned a bachelor's degree from Washington University in Missouri, a master's degree in vocal performance from Texas State University, and a master's degree in guidance and counseling from Texas A&M Kingsville. Since 2015, Flicka has been practicing sound therapy at the Integrative Healing Institute in San Antonio. She's a vocalist that has traveled internationally and nationally. She's also a composer responsible for sacred and secular pieces for vocal, soloists, choirs, and opera companies that have been performed in universities, educational institutions, churches, museums, and temples. Her art songs are published in the series Art Songs by American Women Composers. In 2017, she and her musical partner, who we will talk more about in the podcast, recorded and released an album of meditation and healing music titled Icaros Chakra Soundscapes, which was inspired by her experiences of the improvised healing songs of the Shipibo shamans from the Amazon jungle in Peru. So let's get started and let you get into that podcast. But first, the friendly reminder that this is not to take place of psychotherapy and or medical advice. I am Lonnie Lamb, your host of Space Invaders. Good morning, Flicka. How are you? Good morning, Miss Lonnie. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I'm just I'm so thrilled that you asked me. I, I love talking about sound and music and healing. Just yes. Yes. love it. Yes. I brought you on here because you and I have had wonderful conversations. You've also done work with me some of my own personal journey and healing has come from the, your talents of working with vibration and sound and frequency. I thought it was something that was important for people to talk about and to hear and have a conversation around it. So coming from your lens, I know that you find that there's certain topics that are important to, to cover first. So why don't you go ahead and start and let it discuss the climate and whatever you feel needs to be said before we get into talking about vibration and sound and frequency. Thank you. From my own experience within the last these last 3 years and then and then webbed on top of that is my own journey here with with a sick husband who has put me in a place of juggling a lot of balls in the air and then with my own career and this is not unusual in the world today for many people. Sure. So how can we continue to keep our center? That was a question I asked myself. Mm -hmm. And my life has been about music and sound and singing and sharing and encouraging people to find their own expression. So I followed my own advice. And I started, actually, I created a new CD to address this need. And the CD is going to be called The Still Point. My co-composer, I call him that because he's he and I, th there's a connection there in which we are channeling from the same source. We went into the studio and that was our intention. And the CD is based on the resonant frequencies of each of the chakras. Because what I really believe now is that to totally integrate the energies of the chakras so that we can feel whole and fulfilled and complete, yeah. you can't leave anything out. Everything is sacred. So the root chakra has the impulse of the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. And the crown chakra carries the impulse of the root chakra. So then it becomes very integrated. And knowing all that, then I we based the CD off of those resonant frequencies specific to each of the chakras and carrying within the harmonic. And this is where Daniel is an absolute, oh my God, he's a divine genius. So he opens himself up and these harmonies come through him and you can feel your heart open. And when that happens, then I start to get tears and I know, okay, we're on the right path here. 
And then I add my voice, which is very distantly webbed into this whole texture as an expression of love channeled. So Daniel really is handling, let's love as well. But that's where we synthesize the whole thing. This new CD carries all of that and I call it information because what I do is ask people to listen deeper than the sound. Listen to the information that you're gaining through this sound that he and I channeled. You can sense him in this CD. You can sense me sure. in the CD. Sure. If we're in a pure place, then... So I'm excited. I'm excited to present this, this new, based on my growth and, and Daniel's as well into what I feel is really needed so people can find that place in themselves yeah. that is that information that's channeled through this sound yeah. can spark in them a recognition and that still point place. Yeah. Because all I've studied and all I know about uh, the chemical releases through the sound and the downregulation of adrenaline and cortisol, yes. upregulation of dopamine and serotonin, all that is the feel good. And what we know now is that emotion carries energy. Mm. So, yeah. And it spirals in this toroidal shape centered at the heart. It's and wild. if you're in that shape, in that spin, there is there, I can feel my heart opening right now. There is yeah. nothing that you need. Yeah. It's, it is total fulfillment in yeah. the moment yeah. and there's no fear. Yeah. So that's the place where I've been. I've listened to this CD probably now, the rough mix of it, still not out probably 15, 20 times. Yeah. Just to see what am I really hearing? Because when we do it, we have no idea what's coming through. Sure. Like a, it's like a person who channels. Sure. I, okay. So we talk about chakras and I know that you and I have a very clear understanding of what chakras are. So for somebody that may be listening, that doesn't know, maybe they've heard the word chakra. How could you describe that for somebody that may not be familiar with the chakra? Absolutely. Where they run. Yeah. Okay, you can go on on Google and put in chakras, and, and the pictures will come up. Yes. I'm not a zillion of them. Yes, and you'll see that each of them has a color, starting with the root chakra and red. I actually there have you... a, a necklace that has all the chakras. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's beautiful. My mom actually made it for me. Yay, mom! I know. <laughs> so yes, and, okay. So they each have corresponding color, and it starts at the crown. Correct. At the crown, yes. Oh, oh yeah, that's at the, the crown. The eye, at the right? Crown. No, it's at the top of your head. So this the is crown, the brow, right? Brow chakra. Okay, yeah. sorry, I'm cutting you off. You tell what it is. I'm not doing this justice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm destroying this. <laughs> okay, okay. you're fine. Okay. So each of these, the word in Sanskrit for chakra is wheel. So that is what adepts or mystical people who were looking into this reality that we see all around us, but they see into a deeper web. Yeah. <clears throat> they saw these things spinning. Yes. And they saw colors within that spin. Yes. And so that's where these, and because colors are based on frequency. You have chapter about this in your book. You have yes. a chapter about this, where there's the symbol, where there's the color, where there's the frequency, where there's based off each one. And right. that's, I'm guessing, how you did your first album. Exactly. Where you were able to, okay. Because I utilize that all the time. No, that's a great one. That's a really I good utilize one. that album all the time, all the time. <clears throat> in my own therapeutic work, in my own meditation space, in my own non-ordinary state of consciousness, when I'm in meditation, that is like a key to taking me to those places, is those vibrations and those sounds. So I definitely use all of those off your album. So I would really uh, encourage people to get that music. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then to, to, if you want to take it to the next level, Lonnie, you mm -hmm. can hum that resonant pitch, tone it throughout that, through each track. So like for the root chakra track, uh, okay. you can hum that, that, that resonant pitch Okay. And start to create even more of that electromagnetic flow, mm. Mm. which then causes the tetrahedral toroidal shape around you. Yes. You described that to me one day when we, right after we had done a little bit of work is that you had said, because I was asking you what you were tuning 
And you mm-hmm. said, if you imagine that there's a shape over your body, cause you were, mm-hmm. you were working with my chakra. So it's, if you imagine there's this shape over your body and you, and I, I didn't even know what you were talking about. I had to Google it. You told me like what it was called. And I was like, what is that? And he, you were surprised that I hadn't seen it. So that's why I'm bringing it up because if I hadn't seen it, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know that symbol. What did you call it again? The tetra? This tetrahedron, a tetra, <laughs> yeah, t- tetrahedral geometric sacred that goes into sacred geometry shape and the next step from the tetrahedral toroidal shape is it's been referred to as a merkaba m-e-r-k-a-b-a and that is what was the the hindus and those earlier philosophies and tracts of wisdom called the light body and this you refer in your book there's all different like even the bible you said refers to that light body there's verses in there i think i read in your book there was a verse that you brought up it was about okay so the human energy field the bio field Mm -hmm. or aura has been described in spiritual writing throughout recorded history most notably in buddhist and hindu scriptures and medical texts from india and china and then you said in the king james version of the bible matthew 6 22 reads the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light that's huge yeah that's so everywhere and this is i'm guessing this has been going on for centuries like it's centuries old oh centuries thousands of years back and if you really yeah if you really want to get Egypt was the Egyptians are very aware of all this hence the cobra at the brow I'm already fascinated (laughs) (laughs) yeah so they knew they absolutely knew and their temples were sound sanctuaries temples yes their temples were sound sanctuaries yes yes so, so you were talking about light. So let's go back. Let's go back to the light. Yeah. So each of the chakra, they're really transducers, the wheels. Yeah. And if they're spinning and they're all equally spinning at the same rate and frequency and uh, width, because a chakra can be spinning, but it's very small. So yeah. what you want, actually, what I work with is let's get them all even. Yes. So that they're even. And if they're all small, great, whatever. But if one is wide, wildly out of balance with the other one, then there's going to be imbalance in your life experience. And again, I'm a big proponent that what you think you create, and that is really a function of light, quantum physics, and what we really know, the real nature, which is far deeper, more profound than people, uh, most people understand. So... I don't know if I said that, but you understood what I meant. Yeah, I understood. Yeah, for sure. When you see the medieval paintings and light around, they call them the halos. Mm -hmm. In medieval painting around spiritual people, that was the the brow and the crown chakra that, that were very elevated and present. And so many people can see that photons coming off of people. Sure. And that's that those are ours. And that's also the light. When you say to a person, oh, you're so light filled, you carry so much light. It always feels better when you're here. They it's that's true. They are. And you do you feel like, OK, you bring up something very interesting. I was thinking about this before we met today. So do you think that. If you have so. If you are, if somebody describes you as having light Are they actually feeling a frequency, a vibration, a high frequency, high vibration versus when they feel like energy is off? If you walk into a room and you're like, something's off or that person's not doing well, or you can feel that vibration. Is that what's actually happening? Is there feeling one person is feeling another person's vibration? Because we all have vibration. Like all of us do. We put off a vibration or a frequency. Mm -hmm. And some people are sensitive and not sensitive, not as sensitive to that. Mm-hmm. So would that correlate to when somebody is, oh, you bring light into the room? Is it really, is, is, are these two different things is what I'm asking? Because I'm trying to make a connection of what it could feel like, what it could look like for somebody that is learning about this or wanting mm-hmm. to know more or getting more curious about how they arrive within themselves. Mm-hmm. So would you put those two things together, light versus the, those, the energy or the frequency? Okay. What we know is that the faster something vibrates, the brighter the light, the higher the color associated with higher frequencies. Okay. So the crown chakra is a very high 
frequency, and that is gold and white, the crown chakra. And, and the brow would be violet. So you're moving through the spectrum that you see through shining through quartz. Mm-hmm. or and quartz actually has a spiral tetrahedral pattern quartz crystal so your um, goals or are, are quartz right you're absolutely quartz. okay and right and what they introduce into the environment is very coherent ge- geometry and a very high frequency I'm just jumping around. I'm so sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> it's really good. Actually, it's flowing because I'm thinking of all these experiences because I've utilized you for that type of balance. So it's interesting to me that, and I wonder, it's got to be different for each person, depending on how familiar they are with their own. I don't know if aura is the right word. I'm just very aware of my own vibrations, very aware, maybe overly aware of my vibrations, which can actually cause me, I think, to kick into anxiety a little bit. What I know is when I am in a sound bath with you, I come out of that probably the most relaxed that I, it's as as relaxed as I can get for any form of therapeutic work on myself. Because you've contacted your own still point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to say, if people feel like when they walk into a room and something is off, Mm-hmm. it's the, it, this is the way I like to explain it. Okay. So if, if you've looked at devices that measure sound and show sound, you'll see troughs and valleys. I see peaks and troughs like that. Yep. All right. So if you are at a frequency where those are very close together and you come next to a person where they're wide apart, your peaks and valleys are not going to match. So it it doesn't, there's no judgment on that. It just, you're not synchronized. So is that what you're feeling then? Is that they're mm -hmm. not in sync thing? Okay. Interesting. And that can change moment to moment. It really can by your own thoughts, by the voice that you're using. And I also want to, this is something I've really wanted to stress with my students is the power of words. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are using words that are that carry a negative I don't want to say negative maybe a hurtful connotation Mm -hmm. or those words are connected to a a larger field yeah in which you are then downloading that information Mm -hmm. so if you hear a lot of what I hear on what I put this in quotes popular (laughs) and I put music because it's not music to me uses words that are denigrating to people or uh, are hurtful so if you even listen to them yeah you are opening yourself up to that portal that huge portal of information that can then flow into you and that is something I don't want so I say please watch the words you use your words are prayers who are you going to pray to oh that's so good your words or prayers, who are you going to pray to? It reminds me of, it reminds me of, it's to me, it's like when you're using words that aren't, okay, the only word I can think of to describe it in this space would be kind, right? If you're not, if right. you're using, if your intentions behind it aren't positive or whatever you're saying, to me, that is low frequency energy. It's low vibration. You, It doesn't take anything to function off of a low vibration. Like it doesn't take work. If you think about it, to be able to bring like exactly what you're talking about, to be able to bring yourself into this space where there's light, where there's fast, faster vibration, right? The faster Mm -hmm. the vibration, the more the light. Mm -hmm. It takes work to do that. Like when the best example that I can think of is, so I'm a mom. And when I hear my children, they'll get in an argument, they're kids. So -hmm. when I hear my children arguing, I will go into the room Mm -hmm. and I will say, what's going on? Like mm-hmm. what's happening? Cause I can hear what they're saying to each other. Like the knives come out. That's how siblings are. So I'm like, what are, what is, what's going on? So-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. And I, and so we sit and we have this discussion based off like what happened, right? Cause in, in each of their reality, there's truth. But what I will somewhere find myself saying is, look, when you say words like that, low vibration, low frequency, we don't go there. We don't, and if you do, you recognize it 
and you find a way to either, we talk about coping skills at that point where it's, are we going to walk, are we going to walk away? Are we going to raise the frequency so that the other person can match that frequency? Because when somebody has low frequency, you can put, come down to that. Mm-hmm. You come right down to it. So mm-hmm. I try to talk to my kid. I don't like utilizing the terms like good versus evil, right. bad versus good, because there's too much societal narrative around what that looks like. We have superheroes right. that are bad. They're good. There's dark. There's It's like low frequency, high frequency. That's more simple. Talks about yeah. The behavior than it does the character. And it is just, I would think it would just be, it's harder. And I tell them that it's challenging to be at a high frequency. It's challenging. It doesn't require much to sit low. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. It's like words mean words are, especially if you put music behind it, like you said, like you can, you get on a right vibration or a pitch from music and you're absorbing that. Think about how, like I can go all over the place in emotions, depending on what I'm listening to. Sure. It goes, it goes and right to angry, the limbic system. Happy a hundred percent, hundred percent. And so, and that also has been, music has been weaponized. And so what a lot of people are listening to right now is a way of they're they're going through self-hypnosis into a land that is really dark and they really have no clue that is really what is happening but it is and and then what i know now through my own studies of kind of the realm that is beyond the physical is that there are like pods are collections of energy that look for that as a drain. So when you tell your kids it's negative, it's, it is far deeper. And I'm getting a chill right now than that to, to open yourself up or open up your environment to these lower impulses yes. that, that they almost feed. Mm-hmm on, on, on it. So you don't want to be a generator for that. Yeah, exactly. Like you just don't. And I, I think that like, when you look at children in general, I think children just have the innately, they're the most beautiful souls. It's so let's not start. Let's create an awareness around what that actually is when we are having a bad day or as we start growing older, jealousy, because there's bullying all over the place and bullying is such a low frequency energy so oh, yeah. low you that's the depths you're digging on the bottom of the barrel by that time yeah so it's just to create an awareness of what how you can have a conversation with and it can be anybody it can be your friends it can be your spouses it can be your partners it can be whoever it is where it's hey in my home that's the language i use that's what and my spouse is aware of that he knows that It's Or I'll mention energy. I'll just be like, the energy is so off in this room. One of us or somebody, we got to go out and come back in or something has to change. I can feel it very quickly, but that's because I've been doing work in this area for so Mm -hmm. long. Right. And that's what I hope people listening can understand is just create, just become curious about it. Create an awareness about what could be going on around you. And if you have sacred geometry at play, you have your, the bio field at play, you have vibration coming off of everybody it's like yeah and if you're aware of it you're less likely to be thrown off by it and if you are thrown off by it then you're able to if you're aware of it you're able to pull yourself back in quicker Mm -hmm. i i totally agree and there are very often times when if i'm with a person that i just really sense is not matching who i am i'll I'll say that yeah, I, I just remove myself very kindly yeah. because it's they just are who they are, and I enjoy my own sense of peace too much. Mm-hmm. I will not betray myself by by making it tougher by for myself. No, for sure, yeah. that comes with wisdom too, and knowing right. that it's okay to excuse yourself, and knowing that oh, it's yeah. okay to say, you know what, I this isn't serving me. This space isn't serving me right now mm-hmm. because you're right. It's so much. It is, we've worked too hard to get to a space when you are in a place of stillness, you've done a lot of work to arrive there. Mm-hmm. A person has done a lot of work because the the climate around us, there's too many things Chaos. out there. Yes, yes. And when we experience, as you know, I'm sure you teach this, chaos and trauma take you into the limbic brain and you can't think. So you literally cannot think, yeah. much less make sovereign choices for yourself. Yeah. So there's all sorts of reasons to maybe just even be aware. Take a look at 
maybe spend a week and say, that's interesting. And stand back and observe yeah. when you feel ill at ease or yes. what really is going on. And then say, yeah. oh, okay. Then the first step is observation. Yeah. And then if it becomes something that you want to address, then how do I address that? Yeah. And stay in a place where it feels more comfortable. Yeah. Or being it can able be to more advocate loving. for yourself, being able to advocate and say, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. And I love that you say observation. Cause I think when you say observe, I think curiosity, like getting curious about it, be like, I use the analogy of like a bird, you're a bird and you're flying in the air. In fact, I was yesterday, I took time to go sit in nature. I laid on like a blanket and I just looked up at the sky and I was actually listening to the om mm -hmm. from the monk. I have a question mm -hmm. about that too, that I think is very interesting. So Anyway, I'm listening to that and I watch these birds just fly in pattern and circle over me. And I, I love this because I utilize this in, in, in my work as a therapist, I will tell people curiosity looks like this most, just this bird that just very gently flies over land. It's curious. It's looking for food. It's looking for movement. It's watching. Nothing's happening fast. It's just gliding. And I watch these birds do this over me. And I'm like, I wonder what they're looking at. It's just this beautiful, it's nature, but it's curiosity to me. So when you say observation, that's what that, that's what that sounds like to me is it's just being kind to yourself as you're learning about what's coming up and out of your body or what you're feeling in different parts of your body, your gut, your chest, your neck, your head. Because our bodies will carry all of that. Oh, yeah. It's. Well, what I've, I love the word curiosity. And that is, that's in, we hope that there's more of that these days. That for, but for me, going into a place of observation, it is a teeny step out of kind of the ego reaction or the ego needs or the ego making its way through life. And certainly I don't do this all the time, but to observe myself means I am in a place of neutrality. Yes. And so I, I place no judge. I just look. Yes. And it's also, it's a little bit of a separation of, of what I'm doing or what I'm saying. And this kind of di divine, I want to call it that this divine watcher. Yeah. yeah. So, which is also me. Which That's very awesome. interesting. You call it the divine watcher. It's, I love the different language around it. Cause I think of the bird. That's what I think of this majestic bird that flies over. And you say too, you're like, with just like curiosity, there's no judgment. It's like, how many of us look at something and we're trying to figure something out and we're like, that's stupid to think that. Or why would you think that? Don't have that thought at all. Just observe. Mm -hmm. like, right. Don't judge yourself. Don't be unkind to yourself. Somebody taught you that. You heard that somewhere. If you've got that mm -hmm. message going through your mind, it's who taught you that was stupid to think that. Like, mm -hmm. like it, it's not. It's this beautiful place that your brain is, your brain and your body are connecting and they're figuring things out. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. So that's, that is what I have to say about light and trying to create this temple, this sanctuary within yourself. That doesn't mean you can't do life. I certainly do life. But when I feel like I'm slipping is I get cues from myself and that's I'm tired or I'm depressed yes. or I don't want to do anything. Yeah. It's not, those are my cues. Everybody yes. has different cues. Yes. So then I... It may take a while for me to get myself back, but sometimes I have to take a pretty strong steps. And that starts with me singing every day. And that is one way, and you could tone every day to, to really center back into yourself because that's the only way everybody's looking outside. It's not there. Yeah. The outside does not holding the answers to your question other than maybe what we observe in nature. Yeah. but any authority outside is not going to do it. Yeah. So uh, go within yourself. That's the portal. Yeah. Start with you first. Always. Start with you first. Always. Yeah. And that it's that external, like people have heard me say this on here because I've said it in other episodes, but external solutions to internal problems, external yeah. solutions to internal conflict. It's start with yourself. Right. 
when we reach externally, it's, and there's going to be some things that we reach externally for. Like I reached externally for you to show me how to take it a step further and, and care for my energy fields. Mm -hmm. Okay. Care for my chakras. So I had to utilize an external solution to, to then be able to turn inward and utilize that tool internally for myself. So mm -hmm. there will be some external things. It's when we're looking, like you said, for somebody else to fix something. What to prove of us. Appro approval. Absolutely. Huge, Ab huge, huge approval. Yes. Yeah. And even then it's okay. If you search somebody out for help with something, making sure that your intentions are to glean something from it so that you can then act within your own authenticity and move forward with your life, that you're not always exactly. relying on something or someone right. else to carry you through. Yeah, it's good. That's good stuff. Really good stuff. There's something else I wanted. Do you have something you wanted to bring up? You mentioned. Okay. Okay. And this kind of so... goes along because go ahead. You, you say what you need to say about Om. Okay. I think um, many people who are on this path of searching and trying to understand themselves in this, this synthesis that we're living in, but that's a whole new other conversation, will look, and th there is a lot of people on YouTube or wherever say that Om is the secret way through and it's a specific pitch and all, but uh, in my understanding, that is not the case. Mm -hmm. So Om what they call as the sacred sound is really a, a vibrational, it's not a frequency, but it is a, a, a vibrational impulse that comes from within yourself. Because if it matters, it doesn't matter what pitch you tone that vowel and that consonant to, but what it's doing is setting up vibrations. If you just say, um, you'll feel it right in your heart chakra. Yeah. And then as you go into the, mm, you're going to feel it move up. So what that is moving from the heart to the head, to the heart, to the head. Interesting. Interesting. So, doesn't matter what pitch does not. So interesting. Cause as yeah. both of us are vocalists. So like, we know we've felt that before. When we're sure. singing certain vowels, we can feel it within our chest. And then depending on mm -hmm. where you put it, the note in your mouth mm -hmm. or into your head, like you do feel that you can feel vibration all through your face when you mm -hmm. are singing different consonants. And vowels. Absolutely. But the, that's been, I think, a misunderstanding that people get, oh, I need the right frequency. No, you don't. Just the vowel. Oh, just the vowel, and then moving into the consonant, mm, which vibrates this. Yes. That's perfect. That's perfect. That is, so this is what is interesting to me, is that depending on what, I'll know, I have a playlist of what I think I need, because music and vibration is very powerful for me. Very powerful. I just know, based off how I feel, what whether I go to your album whether I go to a playlist that I've had on YouTube, I know what I need in that moment. What I think is very interesting about the, the specific OM YouTube video that I use is that there are days when I can listen to it for four minutes and I, it is just like, it like grabs a hold of my heart, the vibration grabs a hold of my heart. And then there's this release. Mm -hmm. Some days I can listen to it for 20 minutes. Other days I can only listen to it for four minutes. And then there's this shift into angst. Like I almost feel anxious and I'm like, oh, I, okay. It's I'm done. Something changed. Something shifted in my body mm -hmm. because it doesn't feel good anymore. It doesn't feel useful. Maybe that's what I, that maybe mm -hmm. that's the word. It's not useful. It's almost now shifted into this other uncomfortable vibration for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is. I, I, I don't <laughs> I don't know, Lottie. <laughs> but, but if I would venture a guess, so just let me now just I go into it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so far. Uh, so who are you listening to? What is the pitch of that ohm? That it, are you listening to the? Is, is it I a can. Tibetan monk? Yes, yes, it is actually, and it is. In fact, what's crazy was that I was flipping through. What was I looking at? I was flipping through, I think it was Instagram. I don't know which one I was on. And it popped up 
and it was the sound and I stopped on it and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's tastes good. That mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Like that. So I get off my phone and I Google it and mm -hmm. I sit in it for a second because I was like, oh, that fed me in that moment. It was nurturing to me feeling that like I can even when I'm talking about it, my, I can feel my heart mm -hmm. start to almost have a little bit of a, a vibration. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's something to it. And I'm not, maybe it's because it's that ebb and that flow through my chakra points of the vibration moving from my head to my heart, my head to my heart. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'd never even considered it, considered that because I didn't know that, but there, mm -hmm. but I do know, unlike other songs that I will listen to, that one can very quickly do it, do its job and then very quickly not feel good. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean, so there is a point at which you don't want to listen to it anymore. Yes. Is it that it is, maybe it's done its job? Well, and that's what said, I'm okay. thinking is happening uh -huh. because if I stay listening to it and try to stay engaged in it, I feel mm -hmm. discomfort inside mm -hmm. the very place that it was making me feel good. Maybe it's it did its job and your body says, okay, thanks. We don't need any more. So it's probably I, very I don't know, but that's what would come to me. Okay. That's what I figured it was, but you explaining though, the heart to the, I had not even ever considered that. And I think that does definitely play a role in why there's a shift for me because I have incredibly sensitive energy fields, incredibly sensitive. If there's like anything going on in my body, I feel it right away, right away. Mm -hmm. I'm very into it. Well what would happen if you stopped the, whatever you're listening to the little monk and you then started to tone your own, would that shift anything more? That's just a question. It might be interesting to see what happens. I've never tried it. I will try it. I don't know. Yeah. Let's see what happens. There. There's something about the, like that, that it, because even if I'm at a concert with somebody that can really sing well, Mm -hmm. Really single. I was just at a concert last week. I went to Lauren Daigle and she's a gospel singer, phenomenal voice. Mm -hmm. And when she hits certain pitches, I can feel it in the same space, in the same mm -hmm. place in my chest. Mm -hmm. And it's just like this surrender that my body does. And I know I'm, I'm imagining what's happening at that point is she has hit a note that that works with that chakra. That's what I think is happening in the moment is it's like, oh, that one, that I can feel a shift in my body. And I don't yeah. feel that like, it may also be with the way the speaker systems are housing that note as well. And you're feeling the vibration coming off of the speaker. So that could also be like shaking those cells because we know that vibrate cells vibrate to the vibration. So there could be right. cells in there that are getting sh like, that are shaken up a little bit. And they're get I, th this mm -hmm. is why I'm so fascinated by it is because music is not just for our ears. It is no, not just for our ears. It impacts our entire body. Even the way we think, like you said, it's be very careful, even what you're listening to. What mm -hmm. are the messages that you are hearing? If you okay. if, go ahead. Okay. What I want to bring up now is the study of cymatics. Okay. Yes. I think I noted that in here too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what the word cymatic means wave okay. in Greek. So what it is, cymatics is the study of sound made visible. So this is maybe a new concept to people, but there has been uh, just a huge amount of research starting in the mid 1700s where they would draw a violin or a viola bow across a brass plate that had sand on it and a, and a, uh, an image would emerge out of the sand as it found its place within the, the frequency or pitch that was being produced by the bow pulling on the uh, across the brass plate like a like an instrument. <laughs> so what we know is that every pitch, every sound, even your own voice is creating shapes within your own body because our bodies are 70 plus percent water. And so it may not be sand, but the same thing happens in water. If you put particulates in water and then subject them to different pitches or sound, different shapes will emerge. 
So that's happening in your body. Wow. So <clears throat> what she did or what is she would, she created in you a specific geometric shape with that pitch. Well, she created something. Mm -hmm. Because so, I think I even remember tears coming out. I think I remember uh -huh. after it happened, I think I remember feeling the need to cry and I allowed myself to do that. Sure. Sure. No, go ahead. So that's what it did is it set up this, the sacred geometry within yourself. And it sounds to me like it was really touched your, around your heart. Yeah, it definitely was in my heart. I remember feeling the vibration of it because I remember I, I even held my heart. I even was like, uh -huh. oh, whoa, it's just that instinct to just, oh, yeah. Like, hold. if you imagine too, we'll, humans do that. You'll hold your stomach. You'll hold your heart. You'll, you may hold your head. There are certain signs and symbols that our body gives us to say, Hey, I'm suffering here. Or I'm feeling here. Yeah. I like that better. Yeah, we could, oh, this is good. You, Cause we go like that. Yep. That's yeah. better. I like the word feeling. Cause it can be positive too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Better choice of words. So how does Hertz fit into that? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Hertz is the vibrations per second. Okay. When we say 180 Hertz, that is specifically a pitch. It's an F sharp pitch. And that also carries if you're if you are sounding that pitch in the field or if you pr present that pitch to a brass plate or uh, a glass with particulates in it, then you will see the shape that th that comes with that specific pitch, which is a certain Hertz. And that is a triangle. So each pitch carries a specific geometric shape. And that would appear in your body that you may possibly be able to see if you're in a deep meditation, but otherwise it's not something that we actually see. No. Okay. Th these are on the more webbed uh, levels of reality. Okay. H however, if in our body, no, yes, but in lab experiments, then you can see what is formed. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. By that specific pitch. So I think that there's like a lot of like chatter becoming more popular around the idea of Hertz, like 432 is like a popular one because people talk about, oh, listen to 432 Hertz. It can help with anxiety. Like it's, it seems to be a very popular frequency and you dedicate a whole section of your book to this. And I thought that was fascinating because it's, let's talk about, because 440 can be troubling. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. So let me explain th this. This is, this is confusing. Okay. People say, listen to 432 Hertz. That is the pitch that is an A. It's so you're an basically a. saying, listen to this in the note of a you can but when they, but what is generally uh, um, done because if music is in 432 hertz how can it be just an a so what it is a method of tuning this gets a little bit into because i've even used that language where it's go to youtube look up 432 hertz i've said that so that's why i want to create a conversation around this of what it is so it is tuning it's tuning. Okay. So let okay. me just call to mind to your audience. If you've ever been or seen videos of orchestras before they start to play yes, and before the conductor comes out, the oboe stands up and he plays a note yeah. and everybody else tunes off of that note. Wow. So everything is relative to the oboe's A. That's is that a always, pitch. it's always A? It's always an A. And that's a 432 Hertz. No. Okay. 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 Sadly, it's not that what our, and this happened right after World War II, and there's theories about this. I ha happen to believe this okay. is that in Germany during the war, Goebbels, who was the propaganda minister, hmm. and we know what that is, was promoting that all of the music in Germany be not tuned to A at 432, but A at 100, at 440. Now that's a little bit higher. It's just a few, what we call cents higher than A at 432 Hertz. How would they know that? 
Oh, there was a, the, the, they can, the, there are ways of measuring that now. In the late 1800s, we, they were able to measure Hertz. But before that, nobody could measure so Hertz. So that knowledge, this knowledge of this was during that time, they knew to, to, Okay, so it's, a remember, theory, it's a theory, right? So if the theory was, was if there's validity to the theory of this, then th that individual knew to mess with Hertz. Hertz. Because when you listen, you go to YouTube, say, tuning 432, tuning 440 music. So listen to the difference and you will hear it. Because the music that we hear, no, not with your lady, because she had, anyway, we can get on that lady, the singer. But, oh, yeah, I'm like, but, lady. The music that <laughs> is it is just a little bit higher it would create a little more anxiety or a need to to move or to be safer or something and that's what Goebbels wanted he wanted a population that was anxious hmm. why because if everybody was peaceful they're not going to want to go to war interesting so, I didn't even uh, know that they would even have the knowledge of doing that at that time oh yeah oh yeah hmm. Hmm. Absolutely. So that was 1933, moving wow. into the war years of 36. I and mean, that's what's happening in Germany, <laughs> making the population rare, anxious wow. and upset. Peaceful people don't go to war. Right. Yeah. So that's the difference between 430. It's a method of tuning. So if you want to listen to music that is tuned to A at 432, you will find that it matches your own sacred geometry because music tuned to A432 then reflects through cymatics. We see that the patterns that it reflects, whether it's an A or a C note, mm -hmm but they're all relative to this A, yeah. uh, will create very beautiful, intricate, very defined geometric shapes. Whereas at 440, it still may be there, but it is not as intricate or lacy. I guess that's the word. Yeah. Like it's, it, yeah, that's happening in you. If you're listening to music tuned it, and it's not bad, I'm not saying it's bad, but just know what you're listening to. For sure. Well, how would a person find that? Can you, is YouTube that smart? Is to know YouTube 432 a, like, how would you find, how would you know that you're listening to something that like, if, if you go to 432 Hertz, cause I'm telling you, this is a popular thing right now, people getting okay. into the Hertz. So it's okay. Cause there's certain Hertz. If you go to YouTube and you Google Hertz, put in a number, all these numbers will pop up. I know and it's uh, like yeah. cell healing reduction of anxiety, like all these things that are supposed to help your cells and all this stuff. But there, it sounds to me like there's more of a science to this before you just click on. There and is. You're hoping it, that they're tuned. You can check it. There are, uh, there, I have on my phone, a, a, a way of recognizing pitch at 440 or 432 tuned to those specific ways of tuning. It, it's, it, Lonnie, it's difficult because I was a say, lot of for you, this would be like, yeah, I can hear it. But for the average person, that's not as, and they will have heard your credentials in the, before we started this, because they yeah, will have heard all that. Right. So they know like you're very educated when it comes right. to anything music. So the average person that would not have any of that knowledge or awareness it's like, how would they be able to get, would they be safe pulling up a 432 Hertz on YouTube and being able to listen to it and be okay? Or does it just depend on how it makes them feel? No, I think it's okay. When, but I just wanted to clear up the point that 432 is a way of tuning. It's not a it's, frequency. It's not, a, it is a frequency and you can listen to a to an A at 432 and listen to that all day long. But if you want to listen to music tuned to A432, then put that in. Okay. S maybe 432 tuning. 432 tuning. Okay. That's helpful. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So that people just know where they can go and they can look to have, if you want to start experimenting with this. Then and this then, and listen to 440 and 432 listen to the same piece of music and say how do i feel yeah with each of these yeah ways of tuning 
Because this, so this takes me into the next question because hertz also have to do with brain waves, like theta. And so you right. get very technical in your book about that. Like certain hertz drop you into like, you're either very awake or you're able, you're in full concentration. Monks will sit in their deep meditations at a certain hurt that's full. Like you talked about all those different hurts and how that plays a role. Um, well, yes, it does. And that is, that is created by lots of different ways. If the theta hertz is around seven, seven hertz, that's sub audible, you can't hear it. You can't hear any of these really. You only start hearing at around 20 hertz, 20 to 20,000 generally. Mm -hmm. like the, so you can't hear those low pitches that would be created by seven hertz pitches is not, we can't hear it. So, and I think, didn't you talk about four to eight is like a twilight sleep, right? Four to eight hertz. Four to eight. Yeah, that's theta. So it would be like that. If you could hear something, you probably couldn't fall into sleep, right? If you're hearing something, say that again, Lon. If you're hearing, if you're hearing, because you said we can actually hear between 20 and 20,000, 20, I think you yeah. said in there. So it. Is it hearing to your awareness? Oh, what a good point. That's a good question, honey. So your brain obviously isn't, is listening to, it also, it sets up a sound wave. So we're in training to a very slow sound wave, not to be compared to low frequency, but it is a slow wave yes. that, that your brain entrains to whether you're aware of it or not, or hear okay. it or not. Okay. And and that can be done through binaural. And if you want to get into that, we can talk oh, about Oh, yes, that. I wrote that down. The binaural and the iso... Isochronic. Chronic. Isochronic. Okay, yes. first, let me talk about isochronic. It's easier to understand. Isochronic okay. Okay. means the same over and over beat. So like your common pop song. <laughs> or let's just throw this in, how maybe... Haitian shamans put people into trance by dancing. That's isochronic entrainment. So they go into, I have no idea what, what the brainwave state is like. Is um, hypnosis but, on that too? Might be. Huh. That I don't know on. Okay. So isochronic. Okay. Keep going. Isochronic. And what we, and this is interesting is that isochronic beats that would be a drum beat that is faster than your heartbeat hmm. if you do that your the brain downshifts out of the uh, frontal lobes it goes into an, another place in which that is why you remember braveheart where they were pounding that drum before they yes. went screaming across yes. there Everybody's i've heard ready. this theory before it like so, gets them ready for war right yeah, they're not thinking. Because I have heard this theory before. I don't remember where somebody else told me that. Maybe it was a podcast I was listening to, but that was the purpose of the drum beat was to like just get them concentrating fully on just war. Well, if you really thought about it, if I go across that pasture, I'm gonna get a spear through my stomach. You would not go. You don't wanna be you don't wanna you, be double thinking that, like before you go. They don't want you second guessing. They don't what you're about want to do. you thinking, period. They don't want you thinking, period. Yeah. That and drum and fife that they used in the Civil War, same thing. It wasn't the Scots this time charging, but the drum and the fife. I've totally heard the theory that the whole purpose of the drum was for that. And I'd forgotten mm -hmm. about that until you said that. Mm -hmm. That's isochronic, a way of entrainment. Entrainment means your brainwaves are entrained to that specific beat or, or how quickly it is or how not. So now should we talk about binaural? Yes, because I okay. now that I know because I've that I've talked to people about as far as like the bilateral stimulation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um and so binaural is introducing two different pitches into your right and your left ear. So yes. you need headphones for that. Yes. And so yes. the brain, this is the miracle part. So if you want, say you want five 
hertz so that you could go into theta mm -hmm. state. You might put in 15 hertz here and 20 here. And your brain makes up the difference. So it's five. So subtract one from the other, it's five. And that is what you will entrain to. That's binaural. And that's how, because binaural beats are recommended to help mm -hmm. somebody go into sleep. Yeah. And yeah. I, and, I, and it's also like, to me, it's very fascinating because I'm constantly talking about bilateral stimulation because there's trauma interventions that utilize bilateral stimulation to help the brain mm -hmm. process memories that aren't comfortable to process. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating to me that we can actually get a binaural beat that has that same usage of that bilateral stimulation from left to right to left mm -hmm. to right mm -hmm. and be able to help the body come into a state of relaxation. Yeah. So it's like specifically with EMDR, the eye movement desensitization and reprocessing that's utilized a lot with trauma. Yeah. It is, you can have a light that travels back and forth. Mm -hmm. You can have somebody, depending on how long they've been doing EMDR, may use a pencil, may use their finger, may use a wand, may use, mm -hmm. like, wand. but there's also tappers. I prefer mm -hmm. the tappers, like in my own EMDR work that I was given tappers that helps me go into it, but it's a vibration. It's, it's buzzing like, bzz, 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 yeah. Bzz. And I, so this is just how sensitive I was <laughs> is I kept telling my therapist, I'm like, turn it down. No, turn it up a little, no, a little bit down. No, like I would be distracted if it wasn't just perfect, like in my hand with my body. And then as soon as it was good, it was like the work could get done. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, so it's, it, the brain is freaking amazing how it adapts, how it can be the very pathway that we can utilize to, to, when we've talked today about language, we've talked about vibration. We've talked about thoughts. We've talked about, it's all housed in that brain. The other question that I have for you is, do you think, and I don't know if you're going to know the answer to this, but you, we taught, we have brain waves. We have, so we have an EG, EEG and an EKG mm -hmm. where we can measure brain waves. We can measure heart rhythm. We can measure, do you believe that the waves communicate? Oh, you're talking about the heart brain coherence. If you're hooked up to, because you talked about, you were talking about sound mm -hmm. waves mm -hmm. even, mm -hmm. and our brain has those, mm -hmm. they have waves. Our brain has waves and mm -hmm. our heart has waves. It's what you mm -hmm. see when somebody's at the doctor's office and they hook you up to a monitor right. and it's like beeping. It's got, I wonder if there is vibration put off by that, the heart to the mind and they feed, they read those vibrations between each other. And, and if so, I would imagine that if we've ever had technology to hook up our gut that mm -hmm. would also have the vibration because 95 percent of serotonin mm -hmm. in our body is created in our gut so there's got to be some form of just like the beating of the heart done and then the brain whatever we can't hear but it's measured they measure brainwave all the time so mm -hmm. to me it would make sense that the gut would also have some form of frequency or wave and they all three communicate and when those waves are off which we find all the time happens with like health problems and anxiety depression trauma all of that stuff it all of that they all work together they're not all separate so i just wonder if there is like a beat or a frequency that the body will get on in sync with one another i don't know i think that's called coherence uh, at least for me, that's the way I would describe that. And when I was so depressed after these three years of trauma, I felt just splattered. Yeah. And the way I brought myself back into coherence, and I'm feeling really good now, is through my own toning and my music and my compositions and all of that, which then got the heart, which really is the we think that, I know you know this, is the brain is really not the seat of wisdom. It is the heart, although it doesn't use language. So the brain thinks it doesn't have anything to offer. But it offers everything. Is that yeah. when the heart is feeling whole and full, that your brain then picks that up and your gut as well. And I know that the impulses that we have in our gut for maybe the actions that we're taking or in our observations that are key. I would trust my heart and my gut before I would trust my head Yeah, because the head is full of all of the other programming Yes, and the heart bypasses all that because it not, doesn't deal with words, meling. nor does the gut. It I, deals with feelings. Go ahead. 
Yeah, finish that thought. It it gets me excited. Did you want to finish that thought before I added something? Oh, I wanted to say one thing is that what is now being shown through a lot of these psychologists and scientists who are studying this is that people have an awareness about three seconds out of the future. So the field... Yes, I've heard this. So that, so we pay attention to your gut because your gut will register that. So we actually, so when I'm driving, I, I, think, I heard this somewhere. I can't, this is the second thing you've brought up now that's passed through my field twice. And it's when it hits a third, it's going to be like, I know that there's more work I have to do. So anyway, <laughs> sorry. So Basically. pay attention because you know, that, that can, and this has happened to me countless times is I've done stupid stuff on the road, but it's like the reptilian brain, the reptilian brain is the is that part where it's like you go through a light and you're like wait was that green yellow red and you look in your rear mirror and people are going through it your brain saw that green light whether you registered it or not oh yeah that reptilian brain so i wonder if that's really actually what it might be that three second space that we don't oh i see yeah because it's it, the reptilian brain is responsible for mm -hmm. keeping us safe yes I bet you're right. It's that part. But I think it's uh, I, because the, things don't need to, the body is a quantum field. It doesn't take, it doesn't take any time for, well, there's no time uh, for the gut to talk to the reptilian brain. Yes. So they're in, they're in contact. Yes. And then our field is out in front of us. Mm -hmm. The larger the field, the more information we're going to get mm -hmm. in the feedback loop. Um, is feeding us information. So I'm, I am, I try to stay pretty much aware. This, uh, is, this is how you bring up such a good point because this, in talking about the reptilian brain connected to the gut, and this is how trauma that has not been treated mm -hmm. can manifest because you can be in a situation where you are safe, but your body, something triggers your body into thinking that it is not. Mm -hmm. Because that trauma has not been treated yet. It has not been cleared is the word that I'll use because we don't always necessarily 100% clear trauma. But it's your body can go back to whatever, even if you're safe, you can hear a sound, you can smell something, you can touch something that will take you into this space of the body still going into fight or flight because it thought at some point something in there thought, oh, we're back there again when you're not. Oh, yeah. So it, it, that, and then that when you had talked about, gosh, there was something else that I thought was very interesting that you said that it'll come back to me. So that's another way that, that trauma manifests and how we can carry trauma from decades younger than us. It can be something that happened to you as a child. You've completely forgotten about the impact of it, or it wasn't aware of the impact to it and your reaction of it in adulthood can be the same as what it was as a child. It happens all the yeah. time. In so it's, there was a training that I was in and it was actually somebody that was introducing neurofeedback mm -hmm. and they were talking about how you actually have three brains. You have your, your, the brain that we always talk about the heart brain and the gut brain mm -hmm. and the gut brain really main job is to keep you safe. Like you mm -hmm. said, safety, the heart is connection. It's mm -hmm. like the, the brain that knows how to connect. It knows how to love. It knows how to feel the emotion, the emotional house. And then you have your brain that does all the rest with it. It puts it all together and it's figuring things out. Also, it's got knowledge of things like this is what we, this is what we talk about when it's like negative automatic thoughts where those are all housed up there too. So our body is, if they're not separate, the brain and the gut and the heart is not separate. It all works together, which is why it's so important to, to be curious and to explore or when we're trying to arrive back within ourselves, it's like, there's going to be some level of discomfort as we arrive back in there, but to stay in that observation state and to stay curious so that your body can tell you what it needs to move forward. Could it be that the trauma that is uh, shoved into the subconscious, mm -hmm. the reason why it's uncomfortable when you begin to confront it mm -hmm. is that its job is to keep you safe. And so uh, yes. it needs to remember what that was. It's like an alligator going down a path. If some, if it got stabbed, it won't go down that path anymore. Yep. It's not, we have to thank our body 
for that heads yes, up and yes. it's okay. We're not there anymore. But I will also, so I want to also say that I just listened to this. He's a great teacher. His name is Matthias De Stefano. Okay. And so he, he says, because he's done a lot of work with people who are dying or who have died because <clears throat> he is connected to them is that when we die, the soul is not afraid it's not it is liberated it sees the the where it's going it feels the love and the comfort that comes with dying but the cells totally different thing and what matthias said is that they go through existential fear Yes. That the cells don't have. So that's what we feel is the fear of death. It's from those cells who say, my job is to stay alive no matter what. So they'll fight it. And thank God they do, because very often yes. it saves us from going all the way into death. We come out yes. and we continue to live. Yes. Yes. But I, I, I do have this belief system. And this is just because I'm there's I have a close family member that's nearing the final mm -hmm. stages. And I have said to my mother before, I've said, I really, in watching this process, I'm writing a book about grief because of it, because I want to put the information out there. But it's in watching this process, I really am beginning to see that I do believe, and this is just my own personal belief system, but it's that there seems to be this piece, this, not piece, this space when the body will know to surrender to the soul. Great. Like it will know when it's time yeah. to say, okay. Uh -huh. it's because the soul in my mind, and again, this is my own personal belief, is going to continue on in its journey. Oh. And in this beautiful body that housed it has learned to fight. Just like you said, the mm -hmm. cells have learned to fight, learned to keep you survival. It's lived however long it's going to live. But that there will be this moment in time where there is the most beautiful surrender when it is time. Yeah. I don't, I, ju I just hold, and maybe I think that because it makes me feel better, but I, it also is just like, I want to believe that my cells know, like they will know they'll fight, but they will know when to say, okay, my work in keeping this mm -hmm. physical entity moving. Mm -hmm. It's done. Is yeah, we can, we can rest. We can rest. Yes. No, I've, uh, so many, uh, and I've experienced seeing that myself, so many um, reports of the bliss before the final death. Yeah. The soul is leaving and the body is accepted that. Yeah. And I think it's like, when I sit with this loved one, I, there's something reverent about believing that there's this surrender of this higher power that's just bigger than all of us this energy the energy field the vibrational field all of it and and that my heart and cells will have to surrender at some point to the knowledge of knowing that physical presence will no longer be visible to my human eye mm -hmm. the comfort in knowing that my vibration will connect with that other soul's vibration still mm -hmm. oh they yeah very much have a connection mm -hmm. Because yeah. I don't believe that vibration with that individual started the day that I, my mom gave birth to me. I think it happened before that, mm -hmm. but that's also my belief system. And that's just how I get lost in the wonder of it, but I love getting mm -hmm. lost in the wonder of it because nobody can tell me that it's wrong. It's, it's comforting. And it's, to me, it's beautiful. It's not scary to me, but I'm also not one that is thus far. Death is a, the idea of death is not uh, I'm not, I'm curious about what comes next. I'm going to put it that way. Mm -hmm. I get very curious in just doing my own work with my own returning home to myself and my soul. Mm -hmm. I do get, I'm very curious about what happens next. And if I can stay in that curiosity, then maybe the idea of that, my body and my soul surrendering to one another isn't as scary. I don't know. I wanted to just for your to say that I've I communicate with my dad all the time and he's he's very present and people say how do you know and I thought and I think to myself before he was 
before he died, I was in communication with him. Or you have telepathy with someone you love when they're going to call. What is that? That's, that is energy. And when something's not right. So why does that change? Just because they're not in the physical vessel. It's yes. of course it would continue because I you've experienced that would be more it. limiting. Like them being in the physical vessel is more limiting. So to me, it's like once that they're not in that physical vessel, I wonder how much more expansion you can have because if there's not the limiting, the brain isn't there limiting it. It's that vibration. If we're going to entertain that, it, then to me, it would be that vibration that continue to act freely. I don't know. It's, this is the wonder of it. There's no proof. Like we no. can't measure it. And no. I love that we can't, I love that we can't measure it. I'm like, ha, nobody can measure this. <laughs> Yeah, no, they can't. And all we can do is experience it. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives people the space to be like, you're, that's not, no way. And I'm like, fine. That's your space. This is my space. I, yeah. won't, project that. I won't project that onto anybody. I'll live in the right. world over here by myself. I don't mind that. But so where can people go? I want to like, first, before we do that, I just want to make sure I asked you, I think we covered it all that I had. Yeah. Okay. So if people want to implement sound, what would you recommend? And where can people go from here? Okay. I'm a big, I'm a big believer in toning. Anybody can do that. And, and so I want to call to mind to people, how do you calm a baby? You sing a lullaby and it's very soft and gentle and you're using this. Or how do you, people who hum, they hum if they're peaceful. And that is one way to return really quickly. And if you pair that with breathing, so you sit down in a chair and you just breathe softly into your belly. And then on the out breath tone, I would say within a minute or two, you're back. You're fine. Okay. Everything has returned to a gentle place. That works for me. Mm -hmm. And it works for a lot of the people I work with. So what does toning look like on the out breath? Just like, like it can be out anything. Sigh. It, letting out a sigh can be on any specific vowel you want. You might want it like it could be e. So that's going to vibrate in a different place in your okay. body. Okay. Or you play around with what whatever you need. Okay. And maybe they get curious about like where they feel the discomfort. So if it's like if you're wanting to hold your head, maybe you do the mm -hmm. M so that you're vibrating there. If you're wanting to reach your heart, whatever that might be, do you think that would be a good place for somebody that has no idea how to start this could go to? And again, okay. you're experimenting because everybody, everybody is different. So everybody responds to this kind of activity in a different way. So it needs to feel comfortable and easy for you. And I'd like to tell you a story. Okay. So I go to my dentist and my dentist knows me for any like extensive work. And I went through that a couple of years ago, just she, I said, listen, I may I have to hum through this whole thing. I'm sorry, but I do. So, oh, I put my like earphones this. on. And, and they I would think this. I was a kook like the whole time. I didn't care. I didn't care because I knew what I was doing. And I knew if, it, if it's my comfort that is key here. 100%. 100%. So I would hum like, through cares? the whole thing. Mm, my mouth is <laughs> like open. Your mouth open? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh my God. I'm dying right now. I can see it. I can see you doing that. If I hear that, I'm going to be like, oh, that's Flicka. She's oh, down, no, she's she's down to the she's right. She's her teeth cleaned or something. <laughs> oh, I love it. But it works. It works. Yeah. Not only that, you are you are interrupting the neural flow of pain into your head with something else. Oh, the, the neuro so the stimulation of pain. So, so it, 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 I said, give me the, give me your other stuff too. I want yeah. To oh, for sure. <laughs> Numb it up, but let me get to my place. So I, anyway, so that, so again, humming, mm -hmm. you can just hum anything. Okay. And, and that's a great place. That's within you right now at this second. Yeah. So the other is listening to music that is slow because there are elements that are present in all healing music. One is tempo. Mm -hmm. How fast is it? We want it slower than your heartbeat rate, a resting heart. Interesting. Okay. So less than 60 beats a minute. Does your stuff have that that's on iTunes? Oh yeah. Okay. So they can go to your, it's Icarus, right? 
Is that right? right? They can go to all my music if they want to and, and so not even understand all that. I'll link all of that in the, like in the bio under this so that people can click on the link if they want to go, or they can look up the name of it if they want to try that too. Right. So those two things and, and stay away from, sorry, stay away from popular music Mm. because it's tuned incorrectly. And very often the words, not all, not all popular music. I've got to really say that, but use your judgment, I guess is what I'm saying. That's good. So if people want to know more, you've got a great book out, The Transformational Power of Sound and Music, a handbook for sound healers and musicians, and it's co-written with Tammy McCrary. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they can get that on your website. Yeah. And I will link that as well if they want to know more. Because let me tell you, the title is great. There's so much more in here than just what the title says. There's so much. I know. And it's for everybody. You don't have to be a musician. I try to distill it down so that you did it. It's articulated so well. I love the beginning too, where it talks about just all, all the different ways that different, the world has used music and sound that we just can't on like in, in America, we miss it. We don't see that. Hey, there's been people for thousands of years utilizing vibration sound. When you write about that too, you write about the hurts. I think that's great. You use science and research in here and you link it all in the back of the book. So it's really informative. And then also on your website, they can look up how to reach you. Keep searching.